Earlier, I spoke via broadband to Bahraini opposition activist Mariam al Khawaja. I asked her what she would have said were she to testify before the US Congress. The human rights violations, basically, that we've been documenting for more than a year now have continued and in some cases have actually gotten worse. The Bahraini government has gotten really good at making a lot of empty promises, uh, which gets a lot of international attention, but then unfortunately when it comes to implementing them, it usually doesn't go through with them. For example, we've been hearing a great deal about how torture in prisons has ended. Would you agree with that assessment? Definitely not. As uh, soon as a couple of days ago, when they arrested around 40 people in one night during one of the protests, which was called the self-determination protest, uh, we received several reports uh, of people who were beaten. Uh, in some cases, it seems to have amounted to torture. There were children under the age of 18 who said that they were reportedly um, given electric shocks by the police officers. And so we definitely have received continuous reports throughout the many past months that torture has continued. That has changed to a certain extent from official police stations into unofficial torture centers, uh, torture centers, which was actually documented also in a Human Rights Watch report. How would you assess the U.S.'s role in all of this? President Obama made a very good speech in May where he spoke about the things that needed to change. He spoke about the demolition of mosques. And he spoke about the political leaders who were in prison who needed to be at the dialogue table. Now, unfortunately, there's been no follow-up on that. On the contrary, uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton actually came out and said that Bahrain had the sovereign right to invite the GCC forces into the country, which caused a huge problem because, in a way, it legitimized their presence, but also it made it impossible for activists to get any other country to condemn the entrance of these forces into Bahrain. And then from there, we, what we've seen is uh, statements from every, every once in a while, so they're not, uh, you know, consistent. And usually every statement will start with, you know, Bahrain is a U.S. ally and friend, and then they'll make some uh, light, uh, you know, condemnations of some of the violations that are ongoing. But I think one of the most disturbing issues is the fact that uh, the United States resumed selling arms to Bahrain despite the ongoing violations, despite the fact that the Bahraini government did not implement their own uh, recommendations, and also the fact that, you know, a U.S. former police chief, uh, John Timoney, was actually brought to Bahrain in what was called an attempt to reform the police. But unfortunately, since then, what we've seen is that the violations by the police have actually increased. So what people right now feel towards the United States in Bahrain is that the United States is to Bahrain today what Russia is to Syria. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, Russia, what, what's seen in the Syrian situation, um, and of course you can't really tear the situation on the ground because of the difference in violence and so on, but uh, Russia has a base in Syria. And throughout the Syrian uprising, Russia has uh, consistently supported the, uh, the Syrian regime. Now, what's going on in Bahrain is sort of the same thing. The United States has based specifically in Bahrain. And what we've been seeing is that instead of taking a very strong stand against human rights violations in Bahrain, they've actually supported the Bahraini government by giving them arms uh, or selling them arms amongst, you know, very lightweight uh, condemnations against human rights violations. But in reality, there hasn't been any real pressure to, um, to attempt to stop the human rights violations that are still ongoing and widespread in Bahrain. What do you make of the argument, though, that such is the complexity of the region and such is the symbiotic relationship between the U.S., Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia, that, that the U.S. doesn't necessarily have the sort of leverage it takes to push Bahrain and Saudi Arabia towards democracy? I disagree because, I mean, first of all, the United States needs to be consistent when it comes to human rights and supporting the call for human rights. Uh, they cannot say that, you know, we're going to support human rights in Syria, for example, or in Egypt, for example, or wherever else it happens. But when it comes to their allies, they say, well, you know, because they're an ally, maybe we won't support the call for human rights and freedom. Um, it's, it really ruins the credibility of the United States, not, not just in Bahrain, but in the entire region, when they have such double standards. But also, I think, you know, for many people who live in the region, they know that Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and other countries really depend on Western support, specifically from the United States, um, to stay in power. And so the Bahrainis are in need of the United States administration more than the, than the U.S. needs the Bahraini 
uh, regime stay in place. 